Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we're going to go through some of the um, buyer-seller messaging communication updates that Amazon released last week. And then we're going to have a Q&A at the end. So if anyone with questions, um, feel free to use the Q&A box and then Rob will gather up all the uh, questions and then uh, I'll help and answer all, everything that I can. So, um, whoops. Yeah, so before we start, uh, for anyone that's not familiar with Feedback Quiz, uh, we're a software tool uh, service provider for Amazon sellers. And you know our goal is to help uh, increase brand reputation and profits. So we are an authorized third-party app developer. We are in the Amazon App Store. We're part of the solution provider network. Uh, you can find us in the App Store by going to Seller Central. Um, our main features uh, revolve around order management, automation for reviews, feedback, and we have a brand new profits and analytics tool. And we also have uh, monitoring and notifications for reviews and listings. So that's a quick overview of uh, what feedback Wiz does. So for today's webinar, we're going to just basically go over, um, you know, the communication policies that Amazon posted. Uh, what changes there are to buyer seller messaging, what we're doing at Feedback Wiz to help you guys keep compliant with the changes. And I'm gonna go over some of the strategies uh, you can implement right away with these new changes to help maximize uh, your conversions. And then we're gonna have Q&A at the end. So for people that don't know, uh, Amazon released a communication guidelines update on last week, September 8th. You can find this inside the Seller Central news session, section inside Seller Central. Uh, it's actually a PDF file, so um, you have to download it. I, I put the link at the last slide at the end with the resources, so you guys, uh, if you don't know where to find it, you can download it from there. Um, all these policies uh, are not effective yet, so they're gonna be effective on November 3rd. So we have about six or seven weeks um, for everyone to, you know, understand these policies, make the changes and fixes. And this is probably going to be, um, this is probably, this policy is probably going to stay in place for quite a while since Amazon really hasn't, you know, they've always been very vague about language and communication within, you know, sending emails and things like that. So now they finally, you know, spend some time and document it pretty much everything you can and can't do now. So, um, so this is very important. And I think, you know, with all the, uh, restrictions people have been getting in the last year with sending emails. Uh, this makes it very clear on what you can can't do. So, um, so yeah, I would highly recommend going through this communication guideline update yourself and reading through everything. But we're going to go through everything right now with you guys. So in this update, um, Amazon pr pretty much defined a couple terms here. We defined direct communication and indirect communication. So with direct communication, what they're basically saying is um, there's a few different type of direct communications that you have to, you can use to contact your buyers. And this is regarding problems with your orders, return related messages, and then using buyer seller messaging. So with problems with your orders, it says that sellers have to communicate with buyers of products now available to be shipped or delays. Now, this is probably more for FBM sellers. So if you're an FBA seller, you don't have to worry about this since Amazon takes care of all this for you. So you don't really need to communicate with your buyers for shipping um, delays or things like that since that's not under your control. Um, same with re return related messages. If you're doing FBA, Amazon deals with all the returns. However, if you're doing FBM, um, you, know, you have to process the returns yourself. So you might need to use buyer seller messaging to communicate with your buyers. So, Returns and problems with orders for FBM fulfilled by merchant is something you definitely need to address yourself. Now with buyer seller messaging, they have also defined two terms. One's called permitted messages and one's called proactive permitted messages. And we're gonna go over these two cases in the next few slides. And with indirect communication, this is pretty much same kind of for FBM sellers where you have to update um, you know, shipments, uh, status on your shipments or refunds. And then Amazon sends the direct email messages to the buyers, but um, they do require you to use, um, you know, the orders adjustment feed or the shipping confirmation feed to update these statuses for, you know, FBM orders. So be aware of, um, 
you know, these type of things. So this is all inside the communication guidelines. Now with Amazon buyer seller messaging, um, they've defined uh, basically two terms, permitted messages and proactive permitted messages. So permitted messages are basically replies to buyers who've contacted you about purchasing a product or they have already purchased your product. And it's also considered communication necessary to complete an order or responding to a customer service inquiry. So you are allowed to use buyer seller messaging at any time if the buyer contacts you about something with the order. So as long as they initiate communication, you're allowed to respond to it. Now, proactive permitted messages fall under the category where the buyer doesn't uh, initiate the response first. You're the one that initiates the response. And this is basically what most sellers use buyer seller messaging for, right? They want to um, you know, communicate with buyer by sending them information or asking for reviews and feedback, things like that. So now they've um, really gone in and defined what kind of permitted messages and proactive permitted messages uh, you're allowed to send now. So the good news of this update is that Amazon is finally put in writing saying that, hey, you know, you're allowed to use buyer seller messaging. You're allowed to use third party apps. You're allowed to use API, right? You can use these uh, tools to help you uh, send proactive messages. But they've also tell, told you that you can only use these messages, uh, you can only send messages for the following reasons. Um, and the reasons are listed below. So resolving an issue with order fulfillment, requesting additional information to complete the order, asking return related question, sending an invoice, requesting a product review or seller feedback. So this is, this is really key here because, um, you know, with this, these restrictions in the last year, uh, a lot of, a lot of sellers have been getting misinformation from Amazon, right? From seller support. While seller support has been telling sellers that, hey, you're not allowed to use buyer seller messaging to ask for reviews, or you're not allowed to use an app to ask for reviews. So now they've have this clear in writing uh, saying that you can use apps, you can ask for reviews and feedback. So this is very good because, um, you know, we need to use this buyer seller messaging to get feedback and reviews. Um, also includes scheduling delivery, heavy bulk items, scheduling home service appointments, verifying custom design, or any other reason where contact is required for the buyer to receive the purchase. So let this sink in for a bit. Um, basically, they only want you to use buyer seller messaging for these reasons. So outside of these reasons, uh, they don't want you to send proactive messages. So um, if you're sending just like uh, hey, thank you for your purchase. Contact me if you have any questions. Uh, this is not one of the reasons you want to do. So if you're sending those kind of emails, um, you know, you can't do that anymore. So keep that in mind. They've also uh, included some new requirements for when you send these messages out. So they want every, every seller to, one, include a 17-digit order ID, and you have to send it in your buyer's language of preference. Now, this is a little tricky here because uh, traditionally, if you're sending buyer-seller messaging emails manually through Seller Central, um, it's not so easy to include this information. Uh, however, Amazon does have templates. So one of the things I've feedback with as third-party providers, these are requirements that we take care of on our end, and we have to make sure that we provide this order ID and the buyer's language of preference for you guys automatically when you guys send out these messages. Now, there's also um, a bunch of restrictions they've listed out. And this is really good because they've made it really clear now on what you can't do anymore with proactive messages. So they don't want you sending order or shipping confirmations anymore. So that's very important. Uh, messages only saying thank you or here to help if buyers have any problems. Marketing or promotional messages, including coupons. Languages. Language that incentivizes or persuades the buyer to submit a positive product review, uh, including uh, compensation, money, gift cards, you know, free products, refunds, reimbursements, things like that. Uh, language that asks them to remove existing product review or updated product review, and, or even asking them if they, to leave a review if they only had a positive experience with the product. So basically, no suggestive language. Don't try to manipulate them to write you a positive review or don't try to, um, you know, fish them if they had a bad experience to prevent them from leaving a negative review. And 
the main, the really key one here I highlight in red is a repeat request per order for product review or seller feedback. So what that basically means is that you, they don't want you sending more than one email or review request per order. And this is very important because um, a lot of sellers in the past have been getting restricted, even though that their um, template has been you know, compliant, they haven't been violating any other languages or incentivizing reviews, but they've been sending multiple review requests per order. So this includes using not just buyer seller messaging, but also using the review, request to review button inside Seller Central. So you gotta make sure you're only using one of those methods per order and not using both. Because if you use both, that's considered two product review requests or seller feedback. So that's very important to keep in mind. And we can talk, we'll be talking a little bit more in detail about this later on. Um, they've also included a, a whole bunch of other uh, restrictions now. And this is more probably towards styling and what you can actually put inside the actual message. So they don't want any type of unsecure external links. So any non-HTTP, DPS links, uh, they don't want you, they don't want to have in there, or um, links that are only links, external links that are necessary to complete the order, or links to Amazon. So this statement is a little bit weird because the way you read it, uh, it sounds like you can't send them any links to Amazon, but if you read it carefully, it sounds like you can send them links to Amazon. And the reason why. I believe that you can still send external links to Amazon is because previously in the past, Amazon has specified directly that you can't send them to Amazon storefront links, right? They don't want you to send them to storefront links and nowhere in this guide or it says that anymore. And it also doesn't make sense because if they're asking you, if they're saying that you can use buyer seller messaging to leave a review or feedback, you're obviously going to need to have that link mechanism to Amazon to leave the review. So there's, you know, so to me, it sounds like they're opening up all links to Amazon, but um, I'm still not 100% sure. I'm going to ask Amazon to give us more <clears throat> clarification on this, and then we'll update you guys when we get a better answer. <clears throat> so also, um, excuse me, the permitted messages cannot include attachments unless they're product constructions, warranty information, or invoices. So this is also good news because they haven't removed the ability to, you know, uh, give you guys ability to put attachments. So it has to fall under these three uh, categories. You can't include logos unless if they contain or display a link to your website. So for example, if your logo is like, you know, dogcollars.com or uh, has a link to that, you wanna make sure you remove that .com and only have the name of your logo in there. Um, you can't include links to opt-out messaging. So, you know, traditionally some softwares have a opt-out link. They don't want you to include that because they actually include that already inside their email templates. Uh, sensitive content in images or text. So uh, nothing offensive, tracking pixels or images. So this is kind of, uh, this kind of sucks because tracking pixels are the mechanism for us to determine your open rates. So it sounds like now there's really no way for us to track email open rates anymore. So now it's, you know, more than crucial to kind of know which subject lines are optimal to send out. And, you know, we'll give you some tips on later on to show you which subject lines are the best. Uh, email address, phone numbers. So that's kind of, you know, obvious already. We get people that usually don't do that anyways. Images of purchased products or unrelated to your brand or company. Uh, emojis and GIFs message margins over 20% max width, image or graphic size larger than 80% max width. So basically it sounds like you shouldn't be putting any type of images anymore inside your emails, except for your company logo, if you have one. So keep that in mind. And also they don't want you to try to override, you know, the actual styling of templates. So don't try to make pictures too big or don't try to make your logo too big or don't try to write too much to, um, bypass their margin widths, right? Um, don't try to use too many fonts or different colors, right? So Amazon basically saying they want uh, a uniform type of email. They don't want, you know, sloppy emails or emails that have too much uh, going on. Like, you know, back in the days we used to put on all these animated GIFs and, you know, different pictures and things like that. They want to eliminate all that now. So can't do that anymore. Um, so spelling, errors, grammar issues. So 
keep in mind, these are probably a little bit more um, ticky tack things you have to watch out for. But, um, you know, just if you just try to keep it simple and just use plain text and um, you shouldn't have any problems. And with feedback is we're going to do everything we can to help restrict all these types of things. So if you're doing, if you're sending customized emails, templates, um, you don't really need to worry about this kind of things because it's not going to be possible to do anymore. That was a lot of information. So I kind of want to break this down onto what you can actually do now with your buyer seller messaging. So basically you can still put in secure working links. External links are okay if they're necessary to complete the order or links to Amazon, right? Attachments, but only for product instruction and warranty information or invoices and logos, but they can contain or display a link to a website. So, um, so the good old days of buyer seller messaging, you know, putting on, putting in all those advanced um, images, tactics, can't do that anymore. So we just have to focus on these three, three main things you can still do and keeping your message simple. Um, so what are the consequences for violating communication guidelines? Now, a lot of sellers have been restricted from uh, sending messages, right? So hopefully you're still in that 30 day restriction window. If you are, it's very crucial that you identify um, what you're doing wrong or what you did wrong so you can fix it because it seems like now they're not giving you guys second or third chances anymore. The second chance, repeat offenses, they're basically permanently banning uh, sellers from sending proactive emails. So, so keep that in mind, but this is not the end of the world because it doesn't impact your uh, doesn't impact your ability to sell, right? And you can still reply uh, to buyers that contact you. So that doesn't mean you can't use buyer seller messaging anymore. It just means you can't send proactive messages. Um, you can also still use the important uh, tag to send critical messages. So if you're selling an item that requires, you know, product customization or something that's necessary for them to get the product you can still use the important tagline to send out messages. Um, and the other option is if you want reviews and you, you were using buyer seller messaging before, you can use the request a review button for feedback and reviews. So I'm gonna go over real quick on the best practices when using buyer seller messaging. So the most important thing, like I mentioned before, is to only send one review or feedback request per order, right? Um, don't send random review request email and, and send one feedback request, request email. So you want to keep the review and feedback in the same email. They actually, Amazon doesn't like it when you send two separate emails for these things. Um, don't use, don't ask for review using buyer seller messaging and then trigger, you know, for the same order using the Amazon request a review button. So that's considered, you know, uh, more than one review feedback. And don't use suggestive language. So don't try to incentivize the buyer to leave you a positive review. So try to avoid conditional statements like, if you liked our product, you know, please leave us a review. Or if you had any issues, contact us uh, before you leave a review. So things like that. Don't try to steer them to you know, give you a positive review. So you always ask for reviews in a neutral manner. So if you don't know how to, how to ask for reviews, uh, you know, we have some templates, pre-built templates inside feedback ways that have um, you know compliant language, or you can reference to what Amazon sends when they when you trigger the request review button. Uh, no external links outside Amazon, so don't send them to like your YouTube channel or your website, things like that. No marketing content in the emails or attachments, so don't try to sell them other products. Uh, you know, the, Amazon views attachments the same way as they view your email body, um, although. Now they've kind of still allow you to send attachments. Uh, they're actually going to be probably monitoring attachments more than they used to. So people used to sneak in things like their website or their phone number and things like that. Um, you got to be very careful about doing that because, you know, they're going to be monitoring that. And then don't use the important tag uh, unless it's considered a critical message. So for people that don't know what the important tag does, if you put this in your subject line, this will basically bypass um, the buyer seller messaging opt out, right? So people that have opted out emails, they're, they have the ability now to receive your message. And uh, sellers used to use this to basically try to push uh, to get reviews for every single order. So if you use this and it's not necessary to complete the order, then Amazon's gonna restrict you for, for doing this. 
Um, and also don't write an essay, just keep it personal, friendly, short and concise, really simple. So we're gonna go over now what we're doing at Feedback Quiz to help you guys stay compliant. So just wanna let you guys know it's important for sellers to keep up to date on Amazon regulation and policies. Our team here will do everything we can to help you guys stay compliant. But um, you know, as a seller, you still need to understand what you can and can't do, right? Ultimately, you still have control over what you can send out, your content, things like that. So we can't 100% prevent you from doing everything. So you still need to understand the rules yourself. Um, as a software developer uh, company ourselves, we're compliant with all their developer regulations. So anything Amazon says we can't do, we're gonna remove from our platform. So the upcoming updates with feedback was that we're currently working on right now, and we'll have this ready relatively soon, definitely before November 3rd, is um, basically we're gonna make sure all the, um, all the orders that you send out through buyer-seller messaging will contain a 17-digit Amazon uh, order ID. Uh, we're gonna detect the buyer's language of preference, and we'll block out any emails that are going out. So if your template doesn't have you know, that language, for that preference. So for example, for North America, it's usually English or Spanish for Mexico or uh, Europe, it might be French or um, Spanish as well. Uh, we'll make sure that for those marketplaces that your email template has the right language. If it doesn't, then we're not gonna prevent you from sending that out. Uh, we're gonna remove the ability to track open rates for now because the pixel uh, rule, that's you know now a violation, so we can't do that anymore. Uh, we're going to remove all the ability to insert emojis uh, and animate GIFs, things like that. Uh, we're going to detect insecure links and images inside your email as well. So anything that's non-HTTPS, we're going to block it or give you a warning. Uh, email addresses, phone numbers. Uh, our template editor already has spelling. Uh, we're going to try to figure out a way to put in grammar if possible. But again, this is kind of something that sellers need to be you know, more aware of your on your, end, on your end to make sure that you don't have any spelling grammar errors. Uh, fonts align, alignment, color, spacing, margin, width restrictions. Um, we'll take care of all this, guy, all this for you to make sure that you don't violate any of these guidelines. And then we also have a mechanism already in place right now that prevents you from sending more than one review request per order. So we have a way to detect uh, whether or not it's a review link, feedback link, and then by ASIN level, we can see like if you have uh, duplicate campaigns running. So we'll make sure that you can't run multiple campaigns uh, if they're asking for a review or feedback. And the other big thing was that proactive messages now can only be sent within 30 days of order completion. So previously, Amazon actually allowed you to ask for reviews uh, anytime after the order has been completed through buyer seller messaging. Now they're saying that you can only ask within 30 days. So we're also going to put that limitation in there as well. Um, so other stuff we're doing to help you guys is, um, you know, set up campaigns. So basically how, how can feedback was help you guys with these new, um, you know, updates. So you can use feedback was to set up campaigns, uh, using both customized emails, which is using buyer seller messaging, and you can also trigger the Amazon review quest button. So both of these are hundred percent automated. So you have the ability to use either method, whichever one you think works better. Uh, you can even use a hybrid model. So what I mean is you can use a combination of both. So for example, if you have a product that requires customization or uh, some kind of information that's necessary to complete the order, you can use buyer seller messaging and set up a campaign and basically trigger that email as soon as the order has been shipped. And for Getting a review, you can use buyer seller messaging, the traditionally customized email, or you can use the review request button. So we allow you to actually use both methods, whichever you wanna use. Um, and then the other advantage here is you can set up campaigns for async groups. So one of the most important things I tell sellers is that don't just send out product review requests um, in terms of timing for the same for all your products, right? So every product has a different type of evaluation window. So you wanna make sure you really set up campaigns to target only those products. Like for example, if you're selling a charger, that's something you can plug in and test right away. If you're selling like exercise equipment, that's something that you know might wanna take a little bit longer. So you wanna segregate your campaigns to have different types of uh, sending out periods. 
uh, for asking reviews. And then of course we can still track um, all the emails that you send out and all the triggers for the request button as well. So we'll at least still tell you like how many you send out and you know, we'll tell you, we have a queue manager and a delivery page that tells you exactly you know, the metrics for uh, the review requests and the emails. Um, so I also, we also have the smart campaign detection that I mentioned earlier. So we'll basically, you know, we have link detection. We'll make sure they're not sending more than one email, uh, review request email per order. Uh, exclusion rules, um, basically you can exclude from sending emails to like promotions, refunds, returns, blacklisted orders or buyers. So this actually allows you to uh, try to eliminate getting negative reviews. Uh, repeat buyers. So there's a option to, you know, only target repeat buyers. So this is kind of more of an advanced strategy. Uh, labeling system. So you can actually group and label all your products. Monitor, track, and analyze all your reviews and feedback. So after you know you get, after you send out these emails, we have a product review manager that can show you, um, you know, how many reviews and feedback you've been getting and manage these uh, reviews. Uh, we also offer a lot of blog and support guides, and then we also do free email template audits for our customers. So anyone that has questions about whether or not their templates are compliant, um, just email us and we'll you know, go through and look for you and let you know our opinion. Uh, okay, so real quick, I'm just going to go over uh, what the review request review email looks like since a lot of sellers are confused or they don't know what the difference is. So. There's buyer seller messaging and then there's the request review button. The buyer seller messaging system and the request review button are two separate mechanisms. So the request review button is inside Seller Central on your orders page. If you click on it, Amazon basically um, will send out a email on your behalf, right? And it'll put in your store name, product name, image, things like that. And there's some limitations on this because it can only be sent between the five and 30 day after delivery window. However, Amazon automatically translates into the buyer's preferred language, so you don't have to worry about language transmission, uh, translation, sorry. And this doesn't go through the buyer-seller messaging system, so you don't have, you, you can't keep track of, you know, which ones you send it to or not. Um, it's also the same opt-out list as buyer-seller messaging. So there's been a lot of questions surrounding whether or not the request review is a different opt-out. And we finally figured out that it's actually the same. It's under seller communication. So if you opted out, if a buyer is opted out for uh, seller communications, they're not gonna get buyer seller messaging emails and they're not gonna get uh, request review emails. And then the, also, the other downside is buyers cannot reply to the email as well. So which one is better or which one should you use? So what is the difference between, you know, request review button versus buyer seller messaging email. So real quick, um, when you trigger a request review button, it's 100% compliant with Amazon's policies. So you don't have to worry about like language, content, and things like that. Uh, it can be used even if you're restricted from buyer seller messaging. So this is a good option if you've been permanently banned, right, from proactive messages, you can use this still. Uh, but you're limited to a five, and five to 30 day after delivery window to send this out. Now the pros with buyer seller messaging emails is, you know, you can still uh, customize your subject line content. You can add logos and attachments. Buyers can reply to the emails. So if there's an issue, they can reply and then the message will get to you. Um, and then you can still send this any time within 30 days after a completion date. Um, so there's really no clear winner. I think, you know, sellers need to test both methods to see which one works better. So different products, you know, maybe some of you want to use the request review button, some of you want to use buyer seller messaging emails. Um, I suggest you guys test it out. Uh, we don't have any clear like advantage of which one is, you know, gets you guys more reviews. So we're going to go over some helpful strategies on how to maximize conversions. So um, first thing I, I recommend if you have a product, uh, spend some time, you know, hire a VA or whatever, create product instructions and warranty documentation for all your products because Amazon has made it really clear now that they do allow you to send attachments, right? Now it's still questionable whether or not you can send these as proactive messages, like just right away ask, you know, sending product instructions warranty. I don't really know the answer to that yet, but at least they allow you to send these. So for example, if, you know, a customer replied to you and said, Hey, you know, I, I don't understand how to use my product you can quickly just send out this PDF to them, right? It's already made. So definitely 
create these product instruction warranty documents. Um, don't use the same re review request window for all your products. I mentioned earlier, every product has a different evaluation cycle. So you wanna make sure you understand what it, how long it takes. Um, determine which review request method is best for certain products, right? Don't use tricky or manipulative subject lines. So um, previously people would use like subject lines to bait sellers to open the email to put like RE inside the subject line. So inside this communication guideline, Amazon actually says they have the right to modify your subject line. So if they feel like your subject line is like in violation, they can modify it. So try to keep it simple, right? So the best subject lines to get the highest open rates are always something um, re in regards to like info about your Amazon order ID or regarding your Amazon order ID. And since you have to put in the 17 digit order ID number, um, I suggest you actually put that in the subject line. So it's very clear, um, you know, what this, Amazon order is about. So that's my recommendation for best subject lines. We tested millions of emails. Um, routinely, these two subject lines give you the highest open rates. So I, I suggest you stick with these kind of subject lines in the future since we can't track open rates anymore. Um, determine whether feedback or product views are more important to your store. So this is also an important thing. So the, when you trigger the request uh, review request button inside Seller Central, they actually combine both product reviews and seller feedback in one email. Now, the problem with this is that as a seller, you might understand the difference, but buyers don't really know the difference, right? So they usually will think if they click on the feedback when they're leaving a product review uh, and vice versa, right? So the best thing to do is only put in one of the links inside your emails, right? Because they, usually sellers, uh, buyers don't come back and click on a link again. They're not going to do it twice. So figure out which one's more important and only target feedback or product reviews. And then always respond to negative reviews and feedback. So it's very crucial that you keep track of the reviews that are coming in. Anytime there's a negative review, you wanna to reply to it. And same with seller feedback as well. So I'm gonna give you, this is a real quick video I'm gonna play. It's about two minutes long. So this is to show you inside feedback quiz, how you can actually set up and um, leverage both of these features together. This is the Feedback Quiz Campaign Manager, and I'm just gonna give you a quick overview on how you can organize and set up different types of campaigns. Now with Feedback Quiz, you have the ability to create customized email campaigns, which is using buyer-seller messaging, or you can trigger the Amazon Request a View button um, and set up a campaign for that as well. Uh, I've created a bunch of different products to show you uh, different ways you can set up campaigns. For example, if you wanted to, if you had a product that required a customization question where the buyer needs to respond to you, you can use buyer seller messaging and create a custom email campaign. In this case, I have a product called Dog Caller where the customer needs to communicate with me the name of the dog so I can print this collar out for them. So as you can see, um, it's a very simple message. I can even attach a product instruction manual and I can put in my logo um, as well. So this is all compliant within the new communication policies. As you can see, I can trigger this email to send as soon as the order has been shipped. Now for requesting a review for this same product, I decided to use the Amazon request a review button. In this case, I would create it using this button here, and this will allow me to trigger the re review request button inside Seller Central. Um, the limitations are now that you can only trigger this button after the product has been delivered between a five to 30 day window. However, uh, based on using the data that we collect, uh, we have the ability to exclude order types, um, as you can see here. And you can also select um, order matching rules to select exactly which products you want to target for this um, delivery window. And you also have the ability to target the buyer's purchase count, which is the repeat buyer method. So after you set up all your campaigns and determined um, whether you want to use buyer seller messaging for reviews or the review request button, um, you can easily organize these campaigns. As you can see, I've color coded these by labels. I've tagged them by different types of uh, product type. And then I also created um, custom labels to identify and allow me to easily sort between my products. So for RR, I called this as the review request. So anything with RR you can see has the official Amazon template. So I click on this, it's gonna sort all my review request campaign. If I click on dog, it's gonna show me all my dog um, products or supplements or perils. 
So this is a quick glimpse on how you can use Amazon's, uh, sorry, FeedbackWiz Campaign Manager to organize all your email and review requests. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, we're gonna open up to questions and answers now. And to find the latest communication guidelines, um, you know, you could go to this link here, download it. Uh, we have some resources, uh, feedback with blog. This, uh, we have a very in-depth article on basically all these policy changes, um, everything that I've talked about today. And then we have another article recently um, um, showing how to fully automate the Amazon review request button. Uh, you can always email us at support at feedbackquiz.com and visit our support uh, guide for how to use feedback quiz. And our website is www.feedbackquiz.com. Uh, anyone that hasn't used feedback quiz, free 30 day trial. And this is a promo code you guys can use uh, when you upgrade, give you 50% off uh, first month subscription. All right, Henson. So uh, that's a lot of great information. And thank you everybody for uh, joining us. We are going to go into the question and answer. We're getting a ton of questions and answers. So please stick around and uh, you know get those questions in. I'm, go I'm going in the order they're coming in. A couple quick things. I'm getting a lot of people asking about recording. Yes, we are recording this. Yes, it will be live. I'm hoping later today, but if not tomorrow. And another yes to you will get a uh, email notification uh, with a link to the actual uh, recording that we are doing. So if you missed anything, yes, it, we definitely will have a recording of it. Um, so that answers quite a few because people were asking about recording. Uh, we have a giant list of questions, hence, and I'm going to try to go through these as fast as I can. Um, but uh, there's a lot. So just, just be aware. So uh, let's just kick it right off. Uh, for proactive messaging, messaging, are you allowed to send instructional messages like how to correctly install a product, for example? You and I were just talking about this earlier. Yeah, I think, I think that's kind of a gray zone. And that really depends on if it's necessary uh, to complete the order. So for example, like if it's something that the, uh, the buyer needs to be aware of before they get your package and like if it's very heavy or there's some kind of, uh, you know, special instructions that they might not be able to get from the package itself, then I would say definitely do it. Now, if it's just like, you know, a simple instruction sheet on how to use it, uh, it's still kind of gray right now. I, I would say don't do it just based on the language. Um, however, you know, we'll find out in the upcoming weeks whether or not it's something that Amazon allows. So, um, so that's a really good question. And I will put down on a sheet on something I would ask Amazon uh, if they can clarify. A lot of questions now coming in also regarding uh, the native language, like th that people will receive their email in. Uh, several of the questions are asking, uh, will Feedback Whiz be doing that translation or do I need to go translate all my templates? Um, if I'm using review request, is it automatic? So could, could you try to elaborate a little bit more for everybody on the language, how it relates to uh, using review request and how it relates to our templates? So re request review button inside Seller Central, that's something that Amazon will translate the language um, on its own. So that's one of the main benefits of using the review request button. With buyer seller or messaging email templates, uh, right now uh, we, we, can, we can figure out which language preference the buyer is. However, uh, we don't currently have any mechanism to translate templates for you. So that's something that for now, you're gonna need to have it translated. Uh, but you can copy and paste all that content within our editor, and that's something we can send out for you. Um, but if we detect that your language is not match, doesn't match the buyer's preferred language, uh, we will block that email from sending out. Yeah, there's a lot of questions still coming in regarding the language uh, translation stuff. So, um, but just we got to get some of these qu other questions done. Uh, is anything changing regarding how to respond to customer reviews? You can't see when a seller has responded to a review. Do customers get an alert that there's a response to their review? Um, no, because when, when you respond to review, it goes on the Amazon's website. The person that writes the review um, wouldn't know that you responded to it. The, only, the main advantage of responding to negative reviews is really that it's for people that are researching your product, right? Your, uh, potential clients in the future that are looking to buy the product. So 
there's a, there's a survey that recently showed that like 80% of people actually read negative reviews more than they read positive reviews now. So if they see something negative about your product, there's a little comment box that they can also see your reply. So if they feel like, hey, the manufacturer replied in a timely manner and addressed the issue, they have more confidence to buy your product. So that's, that's the main benefit of uh, responding to reviews. All right, quite a few more to go, Henson. Um, how does Fiat Quiz send attachments via URL or directly? Are URL attachments, email marketing best practices still permitted? Uh, there, this is not an attachment via URL. So it's not an external link. So you don't want to be attaching something via external link. This is just like how you attach something on a regular email message. So Amazon allows us to uh, send an attachment within your email. So you would upload a file like a PDF uh, directly onto the email. Okay, moving along. Uh, am I allowed to send a message for an ebook? Well, it depends on what your ebook is about, right? So the content is very important, right? So as you can see, Amazon has defined like product instructions, warranty or invoices. So if your ebook is talking about, you know, like recipes on how to, you know, how to complement the product, then I would say no. But if it's something to do with the actual instructions or warranty, then um, that's something you can, you can include. All right. Um... It looks like I'm permanently, uh, there's a bunch of people asking about they're permanently restricted. Do we have any advice or tips to help them getting unrestricted? I had like five people ask that, so. Uh, personally, right now, um, as far as I know, Amazon is not reviewing any cases right now to unrestrict people in the past. However, um, I think Amazon will eventually probably um, give everyone another chance, I most likely, just because you know, with this whole communication guideline policy in the past, they've really haven't been very transparent with what you can and can't do. And they've been giving a lot of wrong information um, through seller support. And there's just been a lot of confusion. So um, I would say just hang tight and wait till November 3rd and see what happens. I, I you know, I will try to give this, give our um, opinion to Amazon and see if they're willing to like, just kind of reset everyone's, you know, uh, restriction and give everyone a fair chance now since these guidelines are now in place. So um, for now, if you're restricted, use the request review button. That's a really good alternative to get reviews. Yeah, so I, we're, we almost doubled the amount of questions that just came in the last like five minutes. So we only got about 15 minutes. I'm gonna to try to get through these as fast as I can, uh, but we do have kind of a hard deadline of being done by 10. Um, so let me try to go through some of these quick for you, hence under the attachment guideline are return labels permitted. What's your opinion on that? Um, I don't think you can do that. Uh, the return label mechanism, I think there's a, there's a separate section just for returns. Uh, it also depends if you're doing FBA or FBM. With FBA, um, it's definitely not allowed. But if it's FBM, um, it's possible because that's considered a return-related message. So uh, it really depends on your situation here. But I think for FBM, it's, it's okay based on the guidelines. All right, will Feedback Wiz have templates that meet all the new guidelines coming up? Formatting and uh, all that. Yes, we will. So we're in the process right now of updating all our templates. So we're gonna remove anything that could possibly be in violation and we're only gonna supply templates that are uh, meet the guidelines. So okay. I'm hoping by the end of this week, we'll have an update and we'll send everyone an email uh, regarding the new changes that we've implemented. Yeah, so quick follow-up, uh, uh, quite a few people were asking about what if I have custom templates that they made, um, what will happen to those? Do they have to go change them? Or are we going to kind of like change them for them? Or how is that going to work? Yeah, unfortunately, we can't really change your templates. Um, like I said, this is something sellers need to understand themselves. So if you have, a te you have any violation, uh, if your templates are currently in violation, you have about six weeks to fix it, right? We're going to do whatever we can to help detect, um, you know, any violations. So I'll, dis I'll discuss with our team to see what we can do to send you guys warning messages that says, hey, you know, this campaign or this template has, is possibly a violation. You need to go and fix it. But ultimately, as a seller, you're going to have to go in and fix up your templates yourself. Yeah, that, that was a good follow-up because there was a lot of questions regarding if they were going to get alerts or notified that their template didn't meet the requirements. So I'm glad you said that. Um, somebody is very specific here. I'm currently selling fitness related items. Usually use feedback ways to send a PDF starter guide with exercise says, as you can do with the product. Do you think this would be considered a product instruction? 
Uh, no, that's not a product instruction. Uh, I would avoid um, sending any exercise plans because that's something, um, it's not related to your product. It's, it's related, but it's not direct, right? So you have to read the communication guidelines. Basically, they don't want you to send proactive messages unless it's necessary to complete the order. Now, if the customer reached out to you and said, hey, you know, do you recommend any exercises I can do with uh, this product? Then that's, that's considered something you can reply to and then you can attach that. But as a proactive message, you want to avoid sending that, um, you know, cookbook recipe or exercise PDF that people used to traditionally send. Yeah, there was another one here and Henson just answered this, but I'm going to say it real quick. They were asking about sending an email that gives product information without asking for a review or feedback. Henson just said, no, uh, you have to wait for them to ask, like if you're going to send, you know, something specific on how to use the item. So no, that you can't. Uh, does the restriction on shipping and order confirmation include an email when the customer order is delivered? Um, yes, it does. So okay. that's not something that Amazon wants you to send because Amazon already sends these emails, uh, you know, the, as a buyer, when you buy on Amazon, they're going to tell you when your order ships, when it's delivered and things like that. So these are emails that you can't send anymore. Yeah, perfect. And we're, like I said, we're trying to get through all these, everybody just hang in there. Uh, what qualifies a critical message, critical to what? The buyer's getting the product, the buyer installing the product correctly. Could you go more in depth? I would say critical messages are more for uh, necessary to complete the order, whether it's a customization question, like for example, that dog collar that I showed you, that's something where the buyer has to respond, give you some data for you to ship the product, right? Or let's say you're shipping something that could be sensitive to heat, right? Uh, maybe they, maybe you, maybe it's something like a really heavy package where, uh, you know, they need a way to keep it upright or some special handling instructions. So th those I would consider critical messages, but if it's just product instructions on how to use it, that's something that you would have inside the product itself already. And Amazon wouldn't view that as a critical message. So you gotta be careful. Um, don't try to, if you haven't any doubt, doubts of whether or not it's a critical message, I would say stay away from sending that message. Yeah, a couple more came in more regarding like feedback whiz and them having their own templates and wanting to know if they're compliant. Henson already said that we'll try to like get you guys something that notifies you if it isn't and what changes will need to be uh, done. So moving on, uh, will we be able to back up existing open rate data so we can see performance of our campaigns up until we, you remove the pixels? They're obviously talking about feedback quiz directly. Yeah, so within our campaign manager, uh, what I would suggest you do is when you, st um, when you update your templates, just set your existing campaign as inactive and that's going to save that current state. So all the data is there is going to be saved and then just create a brand new campaign with the new template that you're sending. That way you can always go back and reference, uh, you know, open rate data from, from previously before. Uh, what is the difference between completion date and delivery date? Somebody asked. So yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think completion date is when the order was, um, the actual order date itself. And that's kind of a, that's a good question because I was thinking that myself too, because with the request review button to give you the five to 30 day after delivery. And then the communication guidelines, it says that it has to be three days after completion. So I, it's, it's either the order date or the delivery date. Um, probably the delivery date since that's what the request to review button is using. So I would say most likely the delivery date. Gotcha. Uh... Sorry, uh, just trying to read some more of these because there's a ton of them coming in. Some are long. Does Amazon also send emails to customers for feedback? Um, they do, yeah. So it's kind of random. Sometimes they send emails for asking for feedback and sometimes they send emails asking for um, reviews and feedback. So um, yeah, there's there's two types of emails that go out. Don't really understand. I don't really know the algorithm behind who gets what, but they do definitely send emails asking for feedback only. Yes. All right. And then uh, for products where you're asking a question that is important to the order, like checking to see if your product is combat compatible with what they want, is it possible to put their order on hold until they answer the question? Um, 
I don't know how you could put their, I mean, are you selling FBA or FBM? I mean, if you're selling FBM, then yeah, you have control on when you want to ship it out. But if it's FBA, then it's whenever Amazon, whenever you place that uh, order and Amazon will ship it out. So if it's, I'm thinking it's probably FBM question, then yeah, you definitely can. I mean, if there's, if there's some information where it's necessary to send that order out to them, then, you know, obviously you can't send it unless they give you that data. So, yeah. Uh, this was an interesting question. Uh, for the Amazon review request, Amazon says it already sends this message. What do I need feedback with campaign in this case? Well, this is what I tell everyone. Amazon is now coming out and giving um, very clear guidelines on what you can do to get reviews, right? <clears throat> Getting reviews like a couple years ago was a lot different than it is now, right? Uh, people used to use different black hat abilities to get reviews. Reviews are a commodity in Amazon. It's the most important thing. It's very hard to get, right? So now they're telling you that, hey, you know, we're allowing you to buy or sell a machine. We're allowing you to request a review. Like there's no reason why you wouldn't want to use this, uh, a way to get reviews, especially automation, right? It's like something you just set and forget. Um, it's a free ride, right? So if you're not, if you're not taking advantage of it, like every other seller is doing it. So why not, right? There's really no harm done now, now because Amazon's laid out the rules and there's, you know, as long as you follow the guidelines, you know, you have nothing to worry about. So, I, you know, it's a no brainer as a seller for me, like I would definitely want to do everything I can to maximize reviews. So, so if Amazon already sends out that email, like, and they're giving you a chance to send out another one, like, why not? Right. Why wouldn't I do that? Yeah. Uh, somebody else was asking about uh, being able to put more than one attachment, but I mean, we just covered attachments. Uh, let's see. I'm just, sorry. I'm just trying to read some through some of these. Uh, some of, uh, yeah, there a bunch of people are bummed that they're losing the open rate information. Do you guys have any solutions to get around this or get this metric back for the users? Uh, no, that's definitely, we're not going to be able to get that. Not with the pixel stuff going away. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. It's possible Amazon might actually give us some data in that in the future. Um, you know, something we're yeah. pushing for. Um, but honestly, with open rates, like I said earlier, like those two subject lines that I recommended, I mean, those are going to generate you the highest consistent open rates in general. You know, so it's it's not something. It's not a big deal. It is. It's it's a bummer that you can't see anymore. But we never know, right? In the future you know, Amazon might provide information on, you know, how many customers are opening your emails. And I don't see why they can't do that. So, yeah. What about if uh, people want to get their uh, feedback with templates audited? Uh, what is the process they go about? And is that available yet or now basically? Yeah, it's always been available. Uh, we always tell our customers like, you know, just email us support at feedbackwiz.com. Um, just let us know that, hey, I want you guys to look over my active templates or be very specific on which templates you want us to view. If you have a hundred templates, like, you know, obviously, you know, we might not be able to do that, but if you have a few templates that you want us to look at, and we'll definitely look at for you and give you uh, our opinion. So support at feedbackwiz.com. Yeah. Um... If the customer opts out from a seller communication, can they still receive important emails from their order? Uh, example, issue about shipping. Uh, yeah, they can. The important tagline bypasses the um, opt out. So that would, anyone that, anyone that buys your product, if you use that important tagline, no matter what, they're gonna be able to get that email from you. So that's, that's the critical message bypass. That's what it's used for. So I did get a couple of people asking about, do all these new changes and rules apply to FBM also? Uh, yes, because this is, this is for seller communication. So this is, you know, how, any type of mechanism you use to communicate with a buyer. So um, using buyer seller messaging, uh, you know, I think a lot of these rules apply to probably your package inserts as well, even though they haven't made it clear. Um, this applies to all the Amazon marketplaces, not just U.S. or North America. So, yeah, be aware. This is uh, this is like global everything. Yeah, yeah. Here's a good one that came up. Uh, please c clarify whether the product image of the order item can be included or not. This is a current variable in Feedback Wiz. 
So yeah, we're going to remove that variable because what Amazon is doing right now is when you send out the um, email to your customer, they actually include a few things. They include the title of the product, they include the ASIN of the product, and they also include the images of the product purchase. So this is outside of the actual template or content that you send with feedback with. So this is why they want you to not include product images anymore because then customers are gonna see duplicates, right? It's kind of just, there's too much information in there. So, so yeah, we will be removing variables for images, um, for product images at least. Um, so that's something you don't need to put in anymore into your email templates. Yeah, and I got another one coming in that, you know, if they basically, I'm just going to summarize, it's pretty long, but they're basically saying if they go and make multiple templates in different languages, uh, how will it know which one to send? How will Feedback Wiz know which one to send? Is that just based on marketplace? So with the Amazon API, um, I think there's actually a, um, a way for them to tell us which order and which this order has a buyer in this marketplace with this preferred language. So we actually uh, pretty sure we have that data. So that's, we're going to use that mechanism to figure out, you know, what your buyer's preferred language is. Yeah. And I think there's still some confusion and maybe cover this a little more Henson about our automated review request button. Cause I'm getting a lot of questions about people saying, you know, that is feedback was the same as me just going and clicking the review request button or is there differences? Uh, I'm getting two or three messages regarding that. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So it's basically, we have the ability to trigger it for you in an automated fashion. So it's the same exact mechanism as you going inside Seller Central and clicking it. The only thing we're doing is we can do it in bulk, right? So if you wanna set up all the different um, times on when you wanna trigger it or who you wanna trigger it to, which orders you don't wanna trigger it to, right? that feedback with software gives you the ability to do that, right? Versus you manually going and clicking it uh, yourself, which can take a very long time. It's very slow. So we can do it instantly for you. Yeah, and a lot of questions are coming in regarding like people opting out and I'll just try to, uh, uh, the answer basically to a lot of the people asking about opting out and is there a way around it or is there a way to still get to them? The answer is no, that you basically can't, but. Henson has mentioned this in previous webinars and I'm just going to kind of state it again. Most people that opt out from getting any messages from you are probably not going to leave a product review anyways. So, you know, it's, it's really one of those things that if they're opting out from receiving anything and, and you did happen to somehow get them a message regarding leaving your product review, odds are they're not going to leave it. I mean, that's what we've seen in the past. So uh, moving on there, there's still quite a few coming in here. Um, yeah, no problem. We could stay. We could stay for a little bit. No worries. Let's, yeah, let's try to answer yeah. all the important ones so everyone gets the right and right information here. Yeah, can you still send emails for negative reviews and say something like "We are more than willing to either send you a brand new replacement"? The answer is no. Um, can no longer. Uh, did you say you can no longer send shipping notification emails? That's correct. Yeah. No more order and shipping notification emails. Since Amazon already sends that already, they don't want you sending that anymore. So that's, that's one of the things you can't do anymore. Okay. If, uh, if an item showed up broken and they write to me telling me there's a broken, is it okay for me to apologize and offer a discount code? No, you can't. <laughs> you can apologize and offer a full refund, right? That's fine. Yeah. That's, that's considered, um, that's not a proactive message, right? But no coupons though, right? Yeah, and then you can't be like, all right, uh, I'm gonna give you a refund, uh, but please don't leave me a negative review. Like you can't do that either. So that's, just read the guidelines carefully. It's, it's pretty clear on what you can and can't do, yeah. Yeah, and there's a few questions of people asking, they're sending actual examples of would this be okay? I suggest that anybody like Carlos, if you have a, uh, if you're not sure on what would be compliant, email support at feedbackwiz.com with this message, uh, template that you sort of sent me and uh, we'll take a look at it and let you know if it, uh, if it meets all the TOS requirements or not. Uh, somebody was asking about, uh, do they need to remove the link review request stars that we have in feedback Wiz, uh, the button for our feedback Wiz emails now? Yeah, I would say you're going to have to remove that since Amazon's basically saying no images uh, except for your product image. So for now I would remove it. 
Um, it's something that I was going to ask Amazon also because they include that image inside their request to review button. So technically, um, you know, you should be able to show exactly what the review request button email shows as well, but they've made it clear in the current communication guideline, no images outside of um, your actual uh, store logo. So, so yeah, for now, I would say just remove it to be safe. Yeah, we, again, another one coming in regarding attachments. They have a supplement business. They're including information. Half of the information in the uh, attachment they send is related to the product. The other half isn't. Hanson's already said, just don't send anything as far as attachments unless they're asking for it. And then I would also just stick to it being only information about the product. Um, yeah, it, it really depends on your product. I mean, Amazon, um, you know, what I've been told is, they take every seller on a case to case basis, right? If your supplement is something where, uh, you know, it could be something that might be harmful to their health, right? Or something they might be need to be aware of, like, you know, make sure you don't take this with that. Right. Uh, yeah. so that's, that could be a case where Amazon views it as um, necessary to, you know, give the information to the user. So you can, it's very possible that they will allow you to send that. So, um, you know, if you, if you have any doubts, I would just message uh, seller support and send them your, you know, make a case at least, right? Before you actually send it, say like, hey, I have a product that I feel like is very crucial for the customer to understand before they use it. I need to send this out via buyer mess seller messaging. I need to use the important tagline to bypass it. And most of the time, you know, they're going to respond and they, they might give you an answer say yes, right? They might give you the green light. And if they give you the green light, then you should definitely do it. So, um, you know, if you have any, any doubts, definitely contact seller support with your case and at least, um, have some documentation there. Yeah. So we, we got about six more messages here and we, uh, questions, uh, is there anything that is okay to say if you got a negative review? Um, from what we understand, you can't really say anything now. Yeah. If you get a negative review, definitely don't contact the buyer. Um, first of all, you don't even really know who it is anymore because it's anonymous, right? And unless you try to name match it, which Amazon doesn't want you to do. So regarding negative reviews, just don't reply via buyer seller messaging, only reply on the actual product review page itself. Um, as to what to say, I mean, it really depends on what the issue is, right? You don't want to actually, you don't want to just post a generic message for all the reviews, right? You want to understand what the problem is, try to address that problem, and then maybe give them give them a way to reach out to you. Um, there is a seller review guideline page, I believe. I don't think they updated it yet, but I think on that guideline page, they actually say that you can actually put your phone number or some kind of way to contact them. So uh, check out that page. I'm not sure if it's been updated, but that gives you a way for them to uh, contact you as well outside of buyer sound messaging. Yep. Um, if you choose to only send review request emails to people who haven't returned a product, is this compliant? Haven't returned a product. Yeah, so according to the guidelines, it doesn't say anything about like, you have to send a review to all your orders or you can't specify only which orders to send to, which, which basically means that you can filter out who you wanna send review requests to. And that's why we have exclusions inside Feedback Quiz because obviously you don't wanna send request reviews for like refunds, returns, promotions, right? So you have the ability to blacklist customers, right? So let's say, um, you know, customer, angry customer emailed you previously about an issue, like you want to be able to, you know, do not solicit that order or that customer. Um, so there's no language inside the communication policy that says you have to send it to everybody. So definitely, uh, in my view, you can exclude. Okay. And uh, anyone who's listening, if, you, if you're getting messages from me that says to email support at feedbackwiz.com, it's only because uh, we only have a couple more questions here we can answer before we need to cut this off. But we're more than happy to answer that for you by you emailing us. So again, that's support at feedbackwiz.com. So if I didn't get to your question, please email us and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. So Henson, just a couple more and then we're going to wrap this up. Um, is it better to use request a review automation in FeedbackWiz or should I use a feedback was template? And I think they were also asking about, or should I just use the built-in over on Amazon? I'm just kind of highlighting or summarizing this one. In, in my opinion, I, I still believe, um, you know, customized emails are still better because it's more personalized, right? You have the ability to, you know, write what you want to write, 
right? As long as it follows the guidelines and it doesn't, it's not the, because the problem with the request to review button is it's, it's working pretty well, right? But it's something that's new, it's novel, right? So a lot of buyers are not used to it, but after a while, like as you buy more and more products on Amazon, you're just going to keep getting those same emails with the same subject lines. And I think over time, people just get tired of, you know, the same emails and they just don't open them anymore. Right. But with customized emails, you still have the ability to, you know, customize your subject line and you have the ability to customize the content inside. Um, and as for personal messages, we always seen that, you know, well-written personal messages always get very good results. So I would still recommend using customized emails, but the problem with that is you have to make sure you meet all the guidelines. Right. And, and the biggest issue is that, you know, in the last year, Amazon has, you know, put a lot of fear in sellers by restricting them from sending messages because, you know, sellers really don't know, you know, what they can and can't do. But now Amazon's released this guideline very clear on what you can and can't do. As long as you follow it, um, you're going to have no issues. So that's my suggestion, but, you know, you can always test them out, right? So you can turn on, you can use both methods, you know, test it out for a month and see which one's getting you more reviews and then stick to that method. Yeah. So uh, we had a question come in. I'm going to go ahead and just answer this one. Uh, a lot of people are asking about these changes just affecting the U.S. marketplace. Are all marketplaces? The answer is all marketplaces are being affected by these changes. So then another one for you, Henson, and this is uh, second to the last question. If Amazon sends a buyer a product review request using the recru request a review button, I think is what they're referring to, does FeedbackWiz send another one to them? So when you trigger that button, it's going to send out a uh, review request, right? <clears throat> the way that this thing works is that it only lets you trigger it once. So if you notice, like if you trigger it and then you come back to the same page and try to click a button again, it's going to take you to a page that says it's ineligible, right? So ineligible means there's a few reasons. It's outside of the five to 30 day window. You've already triggered it or possibly they already left the review. So you can't trigger it more than once. That's, that's the uh, benefit of uh, this button. And if Amazon sends it on their behalf, then great. You're going to, they're going to get a second email about it. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of designed in a way where you can't, you know, trigger it more than once or send multiple times, but with buyer seller messaging emails, you have to make sure, you know, when you use it, like if you're using another third party or whatever, make sure they have restrictions in place. And make sure there's limiting on how many you can send out, right? Yeah. So yeah, and I think I, I'm reading a little more of their question. I think what they were do is if they went in and manually clicked in Seller Central the request a review, and then they came back and let's say they have a feedback was template and they try to send it to that person. I think that's what they're kind of referring to. Will okay. it still send or it will. Yeah. So that's that's one of the dangers here is that you got to make sure if you're using feedback with sending buyer seller messaging emails, don't go inside seller central and click on the request review button because there's no way for us to know if you clicked on that or not. Right. We, we don't have an ability to like track and say, Oh, this is already being clicked on because the buyer seller messaging platform and the request review platform are two separate mechanisms. They're not, they're not using buyers <coughs> request review is not using buyer seller messaging. So and that's actually one of the biggest reasons why people are getting restricted is because they didn't know that you can't use both. So definitely watch out for that. Yeah. And this last question is actually a really good one. And I appreciate whoever asked this. How does Amazon handle requesting product reviews if someone made a multiple purchases? So I think what they're basically asking is if somebody buys and let's say a week later buys again, are they able to request a product review each time from that person? Um, <clears throat> the answer is yes. So the request to review or asking review is by per order, right? So as long as they order, if they order from you like 10 times, you can actually ask them 10 separate times because they're considered 10 separate orders. So you definitely can't, yes. All right, so we're gonna go wrap that up. And again, if we missed your questions, please email support at feedbackwiz.com. And on behalf of Henson and myself, Rob Stanley, thank you for joining us on this webinar. And I'm sure we'll be having more on this subject over the next month or so. That seems to be a really hot topic. So as things change, also make sure you're on our email uh, list for our newsletter, because any changes that do happen, we'll try to address those in our newsletter every month. And thanks again for joining us, everyone. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for more information, please visit feedbackwiz.com.